All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up today. We are in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. And if you've never read the book of Deuteronomy, do yourself a favor and read it. It is a great book of the Bible, uh, the Bible, the book of the Bible that Jesus, uh, when he was tempted by Satan, quoted again and again and again. Apparently, Jesus was that morning when Satan attacked in his morning devotionals in Deuteronomy. And here in chapter 31, verse 8, we're continuing our study uh, that he still got the whole world in his hands. Listen, God is still in control. He still, it's all under his purview. He sees it all. And today we're going to hear from Moses. The Holy Spirit is going to speak through Moses. The entire book of Deuteronomy are sermons that Moses taught from the border, on, on the border of the Jordan River as the children of Israel performed prepared to go into the promised land, the, the spirit-filled life, to step into the promises that God had for them. I want to ask you this morning, are you stepping into all that God has for you? Are you realizing that God is in control, that if you trust him and you obey him, that's where you're going to find rest and peace and courage? And today, that's what we're going to talk about. And one of the main ways that the enemy attacks us to get us to believe that God's not in control is through anxiety. Listen to this. Uh, I love this. What lies at the bottom of the ocean and twitches? Do you know what it is? A nervous wreck. <laughs> A nervous wreck. You know, that's how you're feeling today. The Lord wants to give you peace. George, George Mueller said, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. In the beginning of true faith, is the end of anxiety. God still has the whole world in his hands. Listen to what the Bible says, Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. Listen, he says, And the Lord, the Lord, God, Jehovah, Y-H-W-H, the tetragrammatron, right? God, and creator of heaven and earth. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. God's in control. The Lord, he is the one, Moses says, who goes before you. Today, God's going before you. Into the difficult challenges you have ahead, he goes before you. The decisions you have to make, he goes before you. The temptations you'll face, he goes before you. The trials you'll be in the midst of, he goes before you. He's already there. He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He's not going anywhere. He's committed to you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. He says, do not fear, nor be dismayed. God is going before you. As I said there in verse 8, you see the Lord. That's the tetragrammatron. Anytime you see L-O-R-D capitalized uh, in the New King or the King James Version Bible, that is the, the name for God, Y-H-W-H. -H. He's in charge. And he says, the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means that God is preparing the way for us. He's a good shepherd. He doesn't send us in to see if we're going to get killed and then follows after, after, you know, we're laying there, you know, uh, dead on the ground. He goes in advance. He prepares the way. It is Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. I don't fear any evil. God goes before us. He's before us. There's nothing to fear. And then he goes on, he will be with you. Isn't it so powerful when you begin to walk with the realization, wow, Lord, you're with me. You're here right now. You're with me this very moment. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, when you hear that, many of you, when you hear that, you think, all right, if I do everything perfect this week and I do perfect with Jesus and I, I don't say anything wrong, I don't think anything bad, I'm always kind, I'm always nice, I'm always loving, then God's with me. That's not what it means. It says he will not leave you nor forsake you. Listen, even when we fail, even when we trip up, we, we, we screw up, we make mistakes, we sin, God's still with us. He doesn't leave us. Do not fear nor be dismayed. God says, don't be afraid. Listen, today, he's still got the whole world in his hands. As George Mueller says, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. So let's have true faith in our God today, not in our abilities, but in his ability, his faithfulness. And Father, I pray you'd bless your people. 
with that reality today. May you sow into our very being the reality that, God, you still have this whole world in your hands. You're in charge. We just need to trust and stick with you. So, Lord, help your people to do that today, I pray. Bless them with great faith, squelch anxiety in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.